Hey there, Evan Nathaniel Grimm. Today I'm going to be walking you through December 2022 for every single zodiac sign. Now you want to apply first the forecast to your rising sign and then go look at your sun sign and your moon sign. Um, now, so what I'm going to be doing um, is kind of giving you an overview really quick of December and then I'm going to dive into each sign. Now, before I begin, though, if you want to take a look at what 2023 as a whole year will bring to your sign, um, I do have 2023 forecasts available on my website, customized for each sign. Uh, you don't want to sleep on these. They're very important. And I go through every, every single month, every single new and full moon, um, and how all the specific aspects in every single lunar cycle and how that applies to your rising sign, sun sign, and moon sign. So um it's uh the the videos are yeah the, it's 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 pretty dense uh but efficient and effective and i have markers for each section where the new month arises so you can like jump between the specific months if you don't want to focus if you just want to focus on one part of the year um so definitely go check those out the link is in the description box below uh but let me let me go through let me share my screen so we can kind of get into december so what's kind of happening in December here? Um, you know, there's there's a, you know, to be honest with you, December in general feels a little bit like a holding pattern. Like we're kind of waiting for another shoe to drop. That shoe is kind of dropping in March of 2023. Uh, so in March, we're going to have Mars, Saturn, Pluto, all shifting signs. So that's going to be a big momentum shift. Um, and we obviously are still kind of in the wake of these eclipses, the eclipses have passed, uh, for the year. And so we are just kind of, uh, living with that and reflecting on that, like what happened during Scorpio and Taurus eclipses for you this year in April and May and October, and November. So, um, hopefully you kind of start, you drained away the things that were holding you back. Uh, you purged, <clears throat> you know, and, um, you let go of some things. So where are we now? Um, there's two, uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is two uh, lunar cycles. So we have a Gemini full moon, December 7th, and then a Capricorn new moon later in the month. And so I'm going to be talking about how those apply to your sign. Um, but, you know, in terms of the themes of December, um, otherwise, you know, we do have Sag season, of course, uh, which you know, is always the case right now. But what makes this interesting is that we do have Mars retrograde in Gemini on the opposite side. <clears throat> so during a Mars Gemini uh, transit, which has been months and months in the making, this creates a little bit more of a chance of conflict. So usually Sagittarius is very optimistic and generous and tolerant and open-minded and all these things. But the Mars Gemini on the opposite side is kind of picking away at sort of the optimism here and saying, okay, well, this is your big idea. Well, do the nuts and bolts of it, do the, do the X's and Y's actually make sense? So Mars Gemini is kind of picking at your heels saying, I don't think this is actually true. I don't think you have the facts. And that can agitate a Sagittarius pretty mightily because Sag kind of wants freedom from constraints. And so Mars Gemini is just kind of like getting on the on the nerves here. So you're probably seeing in December some amount of conflict that's building and brewing up to this full moon. So there will be that Gemini full moon and it's going to be conjunct Mars. You see it right here. This moon will be conjunct Mars, almost exact. That's going to stir up controversy chaos and conflict uh, to some degree <clears throat> and agitation. So I think people are going to be seeing these conflicts in their immediate surroundings, in their neighborhoods, in their schools, in their uh, in their families with siblings, Gemini being siblings. Um, so that's like one thing, but we also do have Mars continuing to get support from Saturn so outside of that realm and that facet of it, you know, in early December, there's a, there is a nice chance to feel kind of efficient in some ways. But look, I mean, when we dig further into this Mars energy, it is still squaring Neptune and it's just kind of creating this T-square with Neptune and Jupiter. We have Neptune and Jupiter and Pisces 
by early December, Neptune is now direct uh, again. So that's good. You know, by, 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 you know, early December, you know, we do have the vast majority of planets being direct again, except for Uranus and Mars, which are very important planets for driving progress and changing your life. But um, <clears throat> once Neptune goes direct, we should have a stronger sense of like, how we can manifest our spiritual and creative goals in the real world. When a planet's direct like Neptune, it's like, it's not necessarily always visibly powerful because Neptune can be a very internal process for you. But uh, when it's direct, it's like a little bit more like, okay, I can um, advance my goals here in my spiritual life, in my creative life. Um, and it's not necessarily something I have to reflect on anymore. But anyways, uh, Mars, Gemini wants facts. Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces want um, kind of bliss and escape, and Sag wants truth and freedom. So it's hard to reconcile all these things. There's just a lot of mutable energy in the first half of December, or the first really three weeks of December. There's just a ton of mutable energy, except for Virgo. And mutable energy is very adaptable, but it's not, uh, you know, very good at making decisions. It's not a cardinal sign. We don't really have a lot of cardinal, ener cardinal energy in the sky during the in early December. So uh, I kind of feel like people are just a little bit, still a little bit lost, honestly, and maybe just resting. I mean, look, I don't want to oversell December. I, I kind of feel like December is probably best um, used for taking a bit of a break. Um, because otherwise this Mars Gemini energy is just going to get under your skin to some extent. So, uh, later in the month we get cap energy, which is cardinal and, uh, you know, already you can see Mercury and cap here, but, um, you know, by the time Capricorn season rolls around, um, you know, it's a similar story, but eventually we do have Jupiter entering Aries again at the end of December. So I think by the end of the year, uh, the last week, really. People are going to feel like they have some energy again. But until then, you know, we still have Jupiter and Pisces. And so that is seeking growth and expansion in these very subtle, abstract, spiritual areas, which may or may not be visible to anyone else around you. So it's it could be a powerful time for you, but uh, only, again, um, within uh, the sort of spiritual domains um, or the creative domains. And your connection to source or to the divine, you know, could be quite strong in that way. So um, let's uh, let's start to dig into uh, the rising signs here. So what's going on in December for each rising sign? Let's start off with Aries. So I want to I want to talk about Aries, and I'm going to talk about Aries for December uh, with both the Gemini full moon and the Capricorn new moon. So let's see what's happening there. Uh, so. Starting off with the, oh, sorry, just a second. Um, yeah, so starting off with the Gemini full moon, December 8th. Um, I, I just scaled it back, the chart here, just to see an uh, Aries rising. Uh, but the Gemini full moon is on December 8th at 16 degrees of Gemini. Um, and so you want to track exactly where, which house 16 degrees of Gemini is for you. But for Aries, generally, it'll be in the third house. And um, on this Gemini full moon, we have a couple attributes to discuss. Uh, number one, the moon is conjunct to Mars. And the moon is conjunct Mars. That, for everybody, will feel like a surge of impulsiveness, uh, maybe fortitude and courage, but this need to act on our emotions. So it might feel a little bit difficult. And this full moon feels very argumentative combative debate uh very debate oriented um and maybe a little bit insidious like someone's trying to get under your skin so um arguments are coming to a to a head during this full moon but what does this mean for aries so aries sun moon and rising here specifically rising especially um you have this moon conjunct mars in your third house which is about communication it's about your immediate surroundings. It's about your day to day. It's about your siblings, your neighbors. So I think for Aries risings, this will be a very heated discussion. This will be a heated conversation that you have to have with somebody um, over the phone, over email, <clears throat> over a text. Um, it's just a looking a little bit agitated. Uh, so um, it, it's probably a conversation that has to happen that you've just been like avoiding. Um, but it, it 
will probably involve somebody that you already know pretty well, um, I would imagine. And uh, that time the sun is in the ninth. So, you know, you are focusing on maybe traveling, taking a trip or finishing up some kind of educational projects. But, you know, somehow this conversation maybe uh, happens in the classroom or on the trip or um, with the family, you know. And, uh, you know, I think that... <clears throat> It's it's also, to, you know, it's also creating a T-square to your 12th house. So, you know, uh, to some extent that Mars and Neptune square is still active. Um, and so it, it's causing a little bit of confusion. And maybe it's something that like speaks to a dream you had or it's affecting your dreams. It's affecting your sleep. And it's just like there's a really agitated conversation that comes out of <clears throat> maybe you haven't been sleeping that well and that's what causes it. Or maybe it's a conversation about spirituality or about your purpose. Um, but I do think this is a little difficult, um, especially with that 12th house being active here in that T-square. 12th house is very uh, subtle and subterranean and otherworldly. So um it just feels like a confusing dialogue and it might disrupt, uh, you know, some of your, you know, I honestly feel like maybe this is somebody who's trying to rationalize or trying to undercut your spiritual pursuits by making it rational, like, and just quit and just kind of like testing you on it. Like, well, you know, if you really believe in astrology, then, you know, why is this the case? You know, so it feels like someone's trying to undermine things that are more kind of etheric for you uh, with logic. So I would just kind of make sure that you're clear on, well, number one, that you can defend your spirituality or, or whatnot, but also <clears throat> if you don't engage with people who are complete naysayers at that time. Um, now Venus is also going to be squaring Neptune pretty uh or sorry venus is going to be squaring uh jupiter actually um although kind of neptune as well i mean it's really caught between the two uh so venus squaring neptune and jupiter <clears throat> venus is our relationships and squaring neptune and jupiter it does feel like there is a grandiosity to this abundance of feelings towards somebody of wanting to bring in more people into your sphere um and feeling like you want to uh, you're feeling even more confident in some way about a certain relationship with somebody that maybe has a divine quality to it and the, and the quality of even a soulmate when we mix in Neptune and Jupiter. But sometimes that desire to put faith into somebody, it just turns into blind faith here. Sometimes it's excessive when it's the square. So be just be careful about who you're putting your faith into. So maybe this is a argument, moment of agitation that leaves you rushing towards somebody who isn't right for you. Uh, that could definitely happen. But I think in general here for Aries Risings, um, you know, this Venus in the ninth is, I, I like Venus in the ninth at this time. I mean, I think that it's uh, giving you this <clears throat> ability to even maybe strike up relationships while you're traveling or um, as part of your studies, you're building bonds with people. And there may be a relationship here that's just very um it's open it's expansive it's opening up a new spiritual perspective um and we're we're talking about by the way the difference between wisdom and knowledge so with gemini it's more about knowing certain facts but with sag and pisces it's more about wisdom you know and wisdom and, and, and almost mythological um, an understanding of the connection between cultures or the connection between symbols uh, that are used in culture. I mean, things like that. And so um, there's sort of like a higher knowledge that you're aspiring to through a relationship, Venus's relationship. So maybe there's somebody who inspires your belief in the divine or in the, in a, in, it helps you connect to the cosmos more closely. It's an interesting aspect at the same time. But you do want to be mindful again of blind faith. So being avoidant of that. Um, but I do see a relationship for you that has a spiritual dimension to it, especially with that 12th house being activated. Um, we also do have Saturn trying the moon and Mars. So uh, there is something you're able to act on efficiently here because with that moon Mars conjunction, Gemini in the third for you, yes, 
There's a lot of discussion going on. Some of it heated, heated, but you can funnel that quite nicely into a 11th house Saturn into these groups and organizations that you belong to. So there's probably a lot, uh, the pace is quickening with friends, with uh, members of an organization that you belong to. But I think that that's uh, ultimately a positive. And then the sun is trining Chiron as well. So that feels, uh, um, you know, like maybe there is a healing moment somewhere wrapped up in this. And then again, Neptune is direct now. So you're getting getting more clear on what your uh, spiritual pursuits ought to be. And then we have Mercury and Cap by this point. I don't really see that as a huge deal. It's squaring Jupiter out of sign, but, uh, you know, that can that can support maybe even like a teaching moment. So let's get into the final uh, moon of the year, the, the lunar cycle, which is the cap new moon. Uh, so the cap new moon, let's let's actually look at what that means for Aries risings though. Uh, so, uh, and again, I'm approximating, uh, but just generally at the end of December, what's activating here. And by the way, the full moon in Gemini is a culmination. So that was more of like something coming to a head this cap new moon is a time to set intentions so around december uh 23rd you want to set intentions where cap is and for you as an aries rising it's in the 10th house so you know what are the highlights here we have a lot of cap at this point a lot of capricorn a lot of aries suddenly cardinal energy we're ready to act on things so i like this i think by the last week of december you're you're moving forward uh so um technically you know uh so 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 by this time uh, what we're really looking at here is uh, sun and moon. That conjunction will be at one degree of cap, but that sun and moon are squared Jupiter at zero Aries. So for Aries risings, the last week of December is when you get this influx of momentum and confidence because Jupiter has now entered your first house. So Jupiter in the first house, you're feeling more like you have faith in yourself, confidence in yourself, and we're back to kind of where we were in May of 2022. So Aries risings, uh, like I don't think the first three weeks of December are all that flashy because Jupiter is in your 12th house. So like I was talking about, it's very spiritual, internal, which can be powerful, but it's not high impact in the world. But all of a sudden, the last week of December, boom, you're back to feeling like you can reach out for more opportunities, more experiences, um, and people might give you opportunities because they see you as more confident all of a sudden. So this cap new moon looks really good for you. Sun, moon, Venus, Mercury, Pluto, all in the 10th house, activating your career, highlighting your vocation, <clears throat> and maybe you're attracting career opportunities with your confidence with Jupiter in the first. Um, and Venus, Mercury are kind of conjunct Pluto as they usually are this year at this time. So there's just like a perceptivity there, like a, an ability to dig deeper into what is the best career for me or the best project that I want to hook into? And also, you know, uh, Pluto can be secretive, though. So maybe there are some power games being played at work, but it probably benefits you. you probably come out e uh, even or maybe even you're landing on your feet there um, because Jupiter's in your first again. Uh, Mercury and Venus are trying to Uranus, which is pretty nice. And then there's a yacht with the South Node and Chiron and Mars. Uh, that's all a lot of martial energy because Mars rules Scorpio and Aries and then is involved in this yacht. So that actually feels a little bit um, like you're still maybe draining some frustration away. So I think you're draining some frustration away and replacing it with a nice, brilliant confidence. So anyways, that's Aries rising. Um, and sun and moon again think about the sun and moon and uh and sorry i just have to adjust something here um i'm, I'm going to get into taurus rising now um uh, so let's go into taurus rising so what's going on with taurus in december uh so let's back up to the gemini full moon again so what's going to happen with the gemini full moon for taurus risings so uh again this gemini full moon is on december well, it's really on December 8th, but uh, you want to think about for Taurus rising, um, you want to think about this Gemini full moon is happening while well, it's happening in your second house. So the second house is about monetization, values, value creation, and self-worth and natural natural talents. So Mars, the, the, the moon Mars conjunction here <clears throat> to me is illuminating 
um, there may be a disagreement with somebody over values. Someone might challenge you on why do you value this thing? Why do you associate with these people? I didn't think that you associate with people on this side of the political aisle, or I didn't think that you, um, you know, whatever that is, there's a disagreement here over what you're aligned with. And if you're a Taurus rising, you already know what your values are probably. So I think this is your time to really stand uh, up for yourself and say, uh, you know, yeah, I do associate with those people because I also care about those things. So you're going to have to defend a value system probably. Um, you know, but this is, this could also just be a disagreement over money, uh, in some way, like maybe someone wants you to pay, pay them back for a concert. You just don't want to do it. Or you thought you did. It, it looks a little frustrating for these things. So really make sure that you're, um, on top of your kind of inflows and outflows of cash and money, just make sure you're not getting caught in a disagreement there. Um, and the sun is in the eighth. So you're, you are focused on assets, <laughs> at this time um the jupiter neptune square to venus um you know really at this point venus is in um or sorry uh in the jupiter neptune conjunction you know it is kind of creating a t-square a subtle t-square with the sun and moon so at that point that's activating the 11th house you know and so the 11th house there in this context it could be something with friends, you know, a friend group, uh, something is just, there's just a disagreement here again. And it's just confusing. It's creating a little bit of fog in your friend group right now. Like I could feel like a friend maybe is lying to you about what they owe you. Uh, so Taurus Risings, probably a disagreement over money with a friend around this full moon. At the same time, Venus is squaring uh, Jupiter and Neptune. Uh, so Venus here is, you know, it depends on the exact house system you want to use, but let's just go with the eighth house for a lot of Taurus risings. Venus is in the eighth house when it's in Sag. So yet again, we have this idea of maybe a disagreement over money, uh, in a partnership even, but you know, Venus in the eighth is also <clears throat> sometimes about focusing on your own business and your own investments, uh, in like the stock market. And so when Venus squares these energies, uh, you may be disagreeing with, um, uh, maybe there's an investment choice that you're making that you're just maybe not so sure about. Um, or there's a relationship here, which is actually quite intense and secretive that comes from out of a friend group that you're in. Uh, so that's interesting. Maybe that's a little dramatic, a little spicy, but, uh, you know, it, it it doesn't have to be, but I think that there's there's a possibility here of a of an intense relationship or just a power struggle with somebody in your friend group, and it's just there's some confusion wrapped up in it. Um, now Saturn is trining the Moon and Mars, and sorry to back up the Venus square. It could actually just be that somebody's triggering a spiritual epiphany within you. There's a powerful connection that you're striking. Anyway, so Saturn is trining. Moon and Mars, uh, Saturn is really in your 10th. Uh, so that actually could be, uh, you know, some way in which you're maybe initiating a new situation in your financial life uh, with Mars there. <clears throat> maybe you're having a conversation about a new income stream or a new salary, and you're able to channel that into your career very nicely. Um, so... You know, and at this time too, by the way, Chiron's in your 12th, trining the sun. You know, it doesn't have to be about money or finances. It could actually be about values. You're changing your values, what you value based on a very profound spiritual experience or just a psychological one. Maybe you're still pulling some stuff out from that eclipse because I know Taurus Risings went through it because you drained out an intense relationship that you probably didn't need anymore. Uh, and by the way, with that yod, uh, which we talked about already, um, or that approaching yod, there is an approaching yod here with the south node, which I'll talk about at the end of the month here. Um, and again, Neptune is direct in your case in the eleventh house. So maybe how you how are you infusing your spirituality into maybe friend groups uh, and communities in that way? So now we go into the Cap New Moon for Taurus Risings. So the Cap New Moon is, um, you know, uh, it's on December 23rd, that morning. 
And so to get a Taurus rising, we kind of have to uh, jump ahead quite a bit here. Uh, so, um, you know, around this time, the, the Cap New Moon is about setting intentions. And so um, the Cap New Moon is, um, you know, in it's in your ninth house. So all this Cap energy in the ninth, at the end of the month, you will be getting serious with Capricorn, getting serious about uh, maybe a, a new trip or a new educational pursuit and squaring Jupiter in your 12th though, suddenly Jupiter's back in your 12th, like it was around May. Jupiter in the 12th expands your dreams, your visions, your creativity and your spirituality and your sense of your connection to the cosmos, your solidarity, sense of solidarity. So maybe this is a trip that you take that's spiritually enlightening uh, towards the end of December. Or this is just wanting to learn about or even teach about spiritual sub subjects. Um, that looks that that that's 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 quite nice. And then um, you know, digging deeper into it with that Pluto conjunction. And then now we have the yacht. So now, you know, it could even be a moment of like just parting officially, finally parting ways with that person or that relationship in a way that is spiritually healing for you and enlightening. Um I think that, yeah, you're, you're, you're part, if you haven't like, like let go completely of somebody, it's like, now's the time. And you finally have the confidence to do it because Jupiter is in the 12th has a strong sense of faith that it will kind of all work out. So um, now we're going to jump ahead to Gemini. So Gemini rising sun and moon. What's going on with this uh, Gemini full moon? Well, I think that we all know, um, that, you know, the, the full moon in the first is always powerful. So this Gemini uh, full moon, December 8th, uh, the moon is conjunct Mars again in your first house. So the Mars retrograde in the first has left you kind of rethinking some of your decisions. Because uh, ever since August, you've felt more confident. You've had some panache, some flair, uh, you know, and and gravitas and assertiveness and even combativeness. But I think you've bitten off more than you can chew at this point. I think you've probably done too many things. You haven't been that strategic. You've been very scattershot with how you've been approaching your energy. And so Mars retrograde is like a time to kind of like recalibrate there. And so, but I won't lie with the full moon there, it looks very agitated and sort of like, uh it's a fireworks show it's just there's something in you that just you know uh it's hard to control here and it's just like you feel very um you feel very extra here and it's like you know maybe with mars retrograde you had been re you had been like doing a good job of like rethinking and re-strategizing but here on the full moon december 8th it just feels like you're falling back to your ways just there's a, something you can't, you, that you're too emotional about, that you just feel like you have to shout out. And so there's a debate here. I think there is a debate here for Geminis uh, with a partner, most likely with all the Sag energy in the seventh house. Uh, it just feels very um, <clears throat> testy. So, um, you know, that that is definitely not ideal per se. But you just have to have that conversation, but you have to keep your emotions in check. Now, it's also T-squaring, you know, Neptune and Jupiter in the 10th, really, at that point. Um, so it may involve an argument with a parent as well. You're activating the first, the angular houses here. So maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a higher up, maybe it's an executive. Uh, but there's definitely a disagreement uh, happening here around this time about any number of subjects. It kind of depends on your personal chart. But um, maybe one a partner wants something, your job, your boss wants something else, and you want something else. There's a crossroads for you there. Um, and I think that that's, uh, it, again, I just feel like this conversation is, is, is a long time coming. Um, and then at the same time, we do have the Venus squared and Neptune and Jupiter, uh, which is inspiring but confusing at the same time in relationships. So... Venus in the seventh is well-placed 
um, you know, you maybe feel actually somewhat like you want to focus on partnership and the compatibility of some with somebody. But then Neptune and Jupiter are pulling you into in the 10th house into this spiritual zone of like, maybe I want to pivot my career entirely. I want to work on something different. And so I think there's a, a partner or person here that inspires you to maybe think bigger with your career, to chase after the heat, something in the healing arts or something in astrology or something in Reiki. So there's somebody who's inspiring you, but maybe that pulls you away from another partnership and that triggers the debate. Um, and then the sun is trying in Chiron in the 11th. This is in the social houses, the 7th and the 11th, the air houses, really. The air houses are very social. So it's maybe there is a healing moment in your friend groups at this time. And I think that could be nice. Uh, so let's jump ahead, though, to the Cap New Moon. Cap New Moon is December 23rd. What does that look like for uh, Gemini Risings? Well, let's jump ahead to figure that out. So for Gemini Risings, the, Cap the Capricorn energy is really in your eighth house. Um, so the sun and moon are squaring Jupiter and Jupiter's in your 11th. So you have all this cap in the eighth. Um, this is a maybe a new uh, investment that you're getting serious about or a new shadow, new shadow work that you're doing. Um, and, you know, you know so maybe figuring out who owns what, uh, sharing assets with people, if, if that's a thing, assets with partners, uh, shared resources, really. Um, so that's really the focus at the end of December for Gemini Risings. Um, you know, it, it's squaring Jupiter in the 11th. Um, you know, this could be, you know, it could be a transformative moment uh, with, I mean, look, maybe there's a financial responsibility that you have within a group or a community or an organization. Maybe you're handling the financial affairs of a group, uh, or maybe you're setting a new vision for a group that you belong to, and there are financial implications to that. Maybe you're opening yourself up to new people in a friend group that is subconsciously transforming you in the eighth then we have this yod um i'm sorry mercury and venus are trying to uranus uh between the eighth and twelfth that feels like a reinvention of sorts maybe i mean it's not a huge deal to try but you know it could be like there's like dreams that you're having at night that are somehow supporting these new epiphanies that you're having um then we have the yod with chiron and mars the yod is in the sixth house uh, in this case. So you've been draining away bad habits, habits that have been affecting your health poorly, probably. Um, and in a in sort of a yod with Chiron and Mars, Chiron in the, uh, uh, in the 11th, Mars in the first. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I think maybe you would be just draining away bad habits that are ultimately improving your vitality and your strength with Mars in the first. So um, that's a nice uh, touch to the month. So now we're going to go to Cancer Rising. So what's happening for Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, really, in December? So the Gemini full moon here, the moon is conjunct Mars in your 12th house. Uh, let's adjust this so it's more that's more obvious. So um, that is a challenging one. I think Cancer Risings have one of the most challenging uh, beginnings to December because you've had Mars retrograde in Gemini in your 12th, which is just causing a bit of a ruckus in your mind. You're feeling like your thoughts are moving too quickly. And so the moon is a culmination of that, feeling like I can't catch up to my thoughts. Uh, my brain is just has this insatiable appetite for knowledge that just kicks off at the end of the night and it's preventing me from maybe sleeping. So I, you really want to keep track of your sleep hygiene, but it feels like there's a vivid dream here or, uh, you know, some type of like major argument at night or, um, you know, it, it just feels, just feels like, you know, even the 12th house is hidden enemies. So you want to be made, you really want to make sure that you're not getting on people's nerves. 
Like you don't really have a lot of control during this time. The 12th house is not a clear cut domain. So when you have the full moon conjunct Mars in the 12th, you don't want to be making enemies. Basically, you really just did like now that you're watching this video, just please don't make enemies all the way through December 8th. Just don't do that because you're inviting chaos at this time and you don't even know it. It's like an unconscious projection of aggression. So make sure you're not carrying your aggression around. Like that is not a good idea. Meanwhile, we have Sag and all this energy in the sixth house, which is about physical health. Not just met in, in the 12th, it's more about mental health. So it just feels like there is a focus here on health. And you just want to tend to that. You just want to make sure that you're in good shape and you're uh, getting enough sleep. Uh, yeah, the early December time period for Cancer Risings. The circadian rhythms just feel off here. Uh, so really tend to that. It is squaring Neptune and, and um, Jupiter in the ninth. So maybe there is some type of, um, you know, maybe there's a trip that you're planning here. Maybe there's a, somehow it's squaring off with uh, a trip or a belief system or an educational path that you want to take that's taking away from this focus on the body and the mind and the holistic health. I don't know. Maybe there's even a way in which it can help by bringing in a bigger perspective here of like, maybe I need to forgive somebody. Maybe I've been agitated because I haven't forgiven somebody. You know, maybe that's the insight. Maybe that's a, affecting your health, a holding on to a grudge. Maybe you got to let something go. So to, um, you know, feel like you're um, on the right track health-wise. Um, and then again, the Saturn uh, trying to this energy between the 8th and 12th. You know, if you have a business right now, Saturn in the 8th can help you, uh, you know, be efficient there and like focusing on some like, you know, uh, help organize some of your even like just financial uh your financial life in some way as it pertains to even if you're not a business owner, uh, you know, Saturn, the eighth uh, trining Mars, you can kind of get stuff done with like taxes and uh, paperwork related to your business or just financial life. Um, and then again, Neptune is direct in your ninth. You're maybe more clear on where you want to travel uh, in the ninth there. Maybe it's probably by the water. If Neptune's there. You're more clear on what type of spiritual subjects you want to learn. Uh, maybe maybe make, making more progress on that. But let's jump ahead to um, the uh, next, the, the Cap New Moon. So where are you setting intentions by the time the Cap New Moon rolls around? Um, so the Cap New Moon uh, for, the can for Cancer is in the seventh house. So the Cap New Moon is probably some type of new... Um, no, I mean, it doesn't have to be a new romantic partnership, but there's a new alliance. You know, there's a new alliance of some kind being struck. And it might be an alliance with an executive or a parent or a higher up. Jupiter is up in the 10th again. So now Jupiter's back in the 10th, meaning more opportunities are on the way, hopefully, in your career or with because maybe a higher up is willing to put more faith in you again. That's what Jupiter in the 10th will usually bring. Maybe there's a work opportunity. Maybe there's a business partnership that you're striking. And with all this energy in the 7th, you're really focused on getting along with other people. Again, forming these alliances. So by the end of December, that's the focus. In conjunct to Pluto, it's like you want a powerful alliance. Or you want a relationship that's just very deep. And all encompassing. And then there's this yod with the South Node and Chiron and Mars. South Node's in the fifth. So you're a little bit less focused on your creative hobbies, to be honest. But creating these in conjuncts to Chiron and Mars, um, you know, Chiron in the 10th, Mars in the 12th, it kind of feels like you have to let go of some type of, you might have to let go of some type of creative process or pursuit at this time you might have to let go of that 
to make something work to get better sleep with Mars in the 12th, to get along more easily with somebody somehow uh, at work, um, or maybe to focus on a different healing art with Chiron in the 10th. Maybe you want to start focusing on a totally new, um, you know, uh, yeah, some type of healing art. Maybe you have to give up some other thing in your creative life right now to make that work which I know isn't really that fun, but you want to think about with Chiron in the 10th, like how do you incorporate healing into your calling? Um, you know, and I think that that would be, and, and for some people with Scorpio in the fifth, it might just be a fear you're giving up. You're giving up a fear of creativity. Um, so that doesn't, it doesn't have to be inherently a negative uh, thing. So let's move on to Leo. So Leo's, uh, you have the Gemini full moon, you have it in your 11th house. Gemini full moon, the 11th house of friend groups, friendships. So that's a moment of agitation, potentially disagreement within a community, within an organization, within a friend group that you belong to. Um, so there is a little bit of, uh, uh, you just want to be mindful of like in the first part of December here, like. Maybe, you know, it's like if you're not really getting along with someone super well, I would just avoid them around this time of like December 7th and 8th. Um, and opposing the Sag energy in the 5th, uh, 5th house wants to have fun. Maybe, you know, you want to have fun, but there's a friendship or a friend who's causing a little bit of a stir here. So really just make sure that you're around people who give you permission to have fun. Because it feels like with Mars in the 11th, it's almost like somebody's poking away at you saying like, well... You're not allowed to do this. You shouldn't have, like, you should tend to these other things. Like, you shouldn't be childish. Like, don't let, don't be around someone who tries to invalidate your sense of wonder and joy and fun. Um, and this is squaring Neptune and Jupiter in the eighth, which feels deeply psychological and subversive. So it could just be that there's somebody here who's trying to manipulate you psychologically, trying to get under your skin. So again, don't let that happen. But also your intuition is very heightened at this time. So if you're an artist or a performer, this can actually be quite effective for a performance because the 11th house can kind of be the audience to that fifth house creativity. Um, and then uh, Saturn's trining Mars at the same time though. So Saturn's in the seventh house. Relationships continue to feel a little bit burdensome. So I, I, I think that with, with Leo's right here, you, you really just don't want a disagreement in a group or online. By the way, the 11th house is online, social media. So make sure you're not like pissing off the wrong people online or in a friend group because somehow that could trickle back to your relationship with Saturn in the seventh. Like there can be consequences there. Saturn is consequences. So just be like really above, above board in your social life at this time. So let's jump into the cap new moon. I think I said we're really what I needed to say there for Leo's. I think I was pretty clear there. Uh, so let's look into Leo for the end of December. You have the Cap New Moon, which is a, man, a time of intention setting. Um, where are you setting intentions on the Cap New Moon? Uh, you're really setting those intentions in your sixth house, your sixth house of you know daily rituals and routines. So maybe you're committing to a certain health regimen or diet or exercise plan can be a nice time for that. Um, and you'll have a lot of energy in general in the sixth. So you're looking to go deeper into how does my diet affect how I, how efficient I am? Um, how do, you know, how efficient is my work process? All of these things. Um, and uh, this is all trining the 10th house uh, with Uranus. So uh, maybe, you're incorporating um, this new health regimen in, into being a more interesting, effective worker. Maybe your career is suddenly more exciting because there is some type of new, like you're making room for more creative projects at, at work because you, you're more efficient now. But there's also a connection here generally with coworkers and executives. So maybe there's just like, a, this is a time at the end of December we're kind of working hard actually, but it, but it's, at, but it's like positive. It's like, there's something here going on. There's more activity going on with 
coworkers on a project and how does that funnel into your innovative maybe there's some like just this like genuinely innovative ideas that you're stewing on with coworkers like that could be really interesting um oh and i did forget to mention sorry uh, I'll go back to that in a second. So, uh, you know, the South Node is Yod is in a Yod here with Chiron and Mars. South Node is in the fourth. Um, you know that 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 kind of feels like um, you might be letting go of something related to the family. Maybe you're letting go of a grudge towards a family member, um, in in a way that's kind of healing with Chiron and and Mars. Maybe it's. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit, this one is a little bit more abstract. I mean, I kind of think that there may, might be a connection here with what you're letting go of in your family and like a trip you're taking and a friend or a community or a social interaction that you're having. Maybe there's a friend who gives you permission somehow and gives you this like, the, the, they tell you the words you need to hear to kind of let go of that uh, family issue. But I want to go back to the Gemini full moon because I missed the Venus uh, square. So one thing to keep in mind on the Gemini full moon is that Venus will also be squaring, uh, you know, Neptune and Jupiter. So Venus squaring Jupiter, you know, Venus square Jupiter in general, it can be a little hedonistic and, and, and pertains to like over expenditure. But, um, you know, I think in this case, it, 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 I think it's like good if you're a performer. So if this is a time for you performance, performance rituals and stuff, then I actually think that Venus in the fifth is nice. It's very creative and expressive. Um, but, you know, with Jupiter in the eighth there, um, combined with all these other energies, like, I mean, look, maybe it's, it is some type of investment that you're placing. Maybe it's an investment that you feel confident in. Because Jupiter in the eighth can be about that, about those things. But I think generally this would just mostly be a relationship that's very powerful in awakening you to uh, some type of shadow side within yourself that you had ignored before. So now let's um, go into Virgos. So let's look at Virgo rising. So what's happening with Virgos? So the Gemini full moon, again, December 8th, 16 degrees of Gemini. Um, the Gemini full moon will be happening in your 10th house. Uh, so for Virgos at the beginning of December, maybe the bitter disagreement happens with an executive in the 10th, or it's about your career, or it's with a parent uh, or, or an authority figure. But I see you like really being, or just publicly, communicating something passionately i see you very publicly getting into a disagreement with somebody um or maybe you know there could be a family dynamic here because the sun is down in the fourth so there's probably some type of arguments going on with a family member and it's t-squaring jupiter and neptune in the seventh that it that i mean that is almost kind of um, you know, maybe there's implications for a partner there that's getting caught in the, in the crosshairs here. There's a partner who doesn't want to be involved in this argument, but they are, and it's just disrupting and confusing your relationships. Um, so yeah, this is a tough one. I think this is a tough one a little bit in early December. Um, so you just have to be watchful for that. And then uh, Venus is squaring Jupiter. So, um, you know, there there is like maybe a, a positive connection here with like at least a family member. Like, you know, it, it can certainly be, uh, it doesn't have to be all negative. But I think that in general here, it's almost like there is a conversation here that you just kind of had to have um, with a certain, um, you know, with a certain parents or um you know again authority figure and, and just kind of say what you need to say there even if you come across as rebellious or reckless I, I i just think that like the one thing you don't want to do is to like tarnish your reputation though 
So if you're like a Virgo rising, like there is a chance here that you could have a discussion or an argument that's like very just damning. It's just people all kind of see it and they're like, wow, they're kind of crazy. So just make sure you kind of keep your cool a little bit there, but say what you need to say to maybe a parent or a certain higher up. Um, so other than that, uh for the early december time period i mean i do think that that's those are, that's the biggest news there you do have saturn still in your sixth and it's trining mars there so i think once you have that conversation and say what you need to say you know maybe it's about boundary setting at work actually maybe it's like i can't do this all this work i think a lot of virgos will say something like that this is probably an argument with a boss about like what you can't do anymore it's like you've assigned me too much so Maybe have that conversation and that will make your life a little bit easier with Saturn and the seventh trining Mars. It's like, maybe I can be more efficient now um, in that way. So let's jump into end of December for Virgos. So jumping into that. Um, whoa, let's not do that. I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, so the new moon, uh, the cap new moon. Um, that's going to be accenting your fifth house of creativity and fun and joy. So by the end of December, as it usually is for, for Virgo risings, there is a little bit of amusement to be had. Um, and it's squaring Jupiter. Um, and Jupiter really should be in the eighth here. So let me, I mean, this is all, I'm using, I'm assuming whole sign, but this is showing Placidus. But anyways, um, just this is a general guide. So, um, uh, you know, the sun and moon in the fifth, squaring Jupiter in the eighth, um, that, that feels creative, very creative. Um, it feels creative. It feels like you're able to, you know, draw on some type of deeper, darker energy to create something exciting. Uh, for some people, this actually might just be a date that you're going on. There's a date that's happening at the end of December, uh, but most likely with the holidays, it's just this moment of joy. Um, and a commitment to joy and a creative expression. And then now that Jupiter is back in the a in Aries, it's in your eighth, um, you know, that typically bodes well for like investments, investment opportunities, um, by the way. And um, and then the yacht here with um, the South Node between Chiron and Mars, you're letting go of some anger. Most likely you're letting go of some anger, maybe towards that parent or towards that higher up. So I think that's quite beautiful in a way. So now we're going to get into Libra rising. So Libra risings, you have um, you have the Gemini full moon. Uh, you have the Gemini full moon in your ninth house. So in early December here, December seventh or eighth, you have the Gemini full moon in your ninth. Um, that that really speaks to this amplification of of energy and, and even agitation. There's an angry conversation here. There's an argument happening um, in the ninth house. Maybe it's an argument over philosophies, worldviews, an argument over ideas, an argument about school, about where you want to go to school, where you don't want to go, what you want to study. Maybe it's an argument about travel. Maybe it's an argument while you're traveling. So I think a lot of Libra risings are probably caught in some type of... Um, I would see for a lot of you, probably it's travel related. You're probably arguing about where you want to go with somebody or, you know, um, I, but for others, again, it could just be an argument about a worldview. You're debating a worldview in some way. Um, and at that time, the Sag energy is in the third, has the communication. And it's all T-squaring um, Mars, uh, or sorry, Jupiter, Neptune in the sixth. So, um to what extent that influences this, I don't really know, to be honest. I don't know if it will. It might have a subtle impact. I think the bigger deal here is that the Gemini full moon is in the ninth, which is like kind of, um, it's really you debating and uh, over all these things, education or travel or whatnot. And, um, you know, debating that in the third with all the Sag energy, debating it with maybe a sibling or you're just debating it over the phone. Like there's something communication related there. Maybe it's debating about education. And again, like what path you want to pursue. Um, but with Jupiter and Neptune in the sixth, uh, there's also a little bit of like a fog around 
how is this going to affect my day-to-day responsibilities if I commit to this travel, this trip, or whatnot? Uh, Venus square, uh, Venus is squaring Neptune between the third and sixth house. Um, that is, um, I don't know if that really changes too many things there. Um, there could be maybe like a moment of optimism and, uh, confidence in your financial life that maybe you can afford this trip. And that creates the debate. Like, I think that might actually be the sequence. Like maybe you've spent too much on a trip. And now your partner is like, what the hell? Something like that. Um, so some combination of those things. Um, Saturn is trining in Mars at this time between the 5th and 9th. Um, Saturn in the 5th, you are continuing to manifest some type of creative projects. You're, you're definitely trying to manifest some type of creative project, um, which I like. I think Saturn in the 5th is pretty is pretty easy, actually, compared to a lot of Saturn placements. Um and then Mercury, or sorry, Neptune is now direct in the sixth. So maybe getting more clarity in some areas of your life on how you want to incorporate spirituality into your everyday. Um, but otherwise, I, I I don't know. I don't really, I don't, I feel like this could be a big deal, this this full moon, but I think it's, it's, uh, it could, it, there's a couple different, there's a whole range of topics that could be about. Um what I think is more interesting for Libras is the end of the month. So there's a cap new moon that's accenting your fourth house. So, you know, anytime you have these full moons or new moons in the cadent houses, a lot of times it can get a little bit, um, it makes it actually harder to predict. But when you, when you activate an angular house, it's kind of like, boom, you're doing something here. It's a transition um or it's a new beginning i should say so the cap new moon for you is in the fourth so i think by the end of the month there's something big happening for libras in their family or in their home life because there's just a lot of cap here a lot of capricorn mercury venus pluto sun moon it's all packed down in the fourth so you're responsible with cap you're, you're capricorn you're taking responsibility for someone in the family or for a home um, and maybe committing to a certain family life. But um, with Pluto there, you might even be digging deeper into your ancestry, you know, with because it's pretty close to Mercury there. So maybe it, it could just be a fun project, you know, like where do I come from? Where do my, where's my great, 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 whatever grandfather from? That could be an interesting project. Um, and it's squaring Jupiter uh, in the seventh, you really have Jupiter back in the seventh. It kind of depends on the house system you use. But the big the big thing for Libras here is that Jupiter is back in Aries. So it's 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 really in your seventh house where it's opposing your sun or moon. And so Libras have had a quiet year. I haven't talked about Libras that much on TikTok. And some Libras get pissed off at me about it. And it's like, I have to be objective here and I have to look at the transits. And the transits are not, we're not this year doing that much for you. You had Jupiter and Aries all only to the eighth degree, though. So you had it. It was kind of a subtle thing, in my opinion, because it didn't go all the way through. It wasn't ready to go all the way through Aries yet. But now, starting here, the end of December, Jupiter's in Aries. It's it's in Aries for good. It's not going to go back to Pisces. So between here, the end of December, and late May of 2023, you will have growth in your relationships, in your alliances, in your business partnerships, in your partnerships generally when Jupiter enters the seventh again. And so this could be the birth of a simultaneously a new home life, a new family dynamic, and somehow the opening of opportunities in your partnerships. So it just feels like alliances are getting better at the end of the year for Libras. So, and then finally, that south node is yachting uh, Mars and Chiron. So letting go of some anger, letting go of some aggression somewhere here that makes room for these partnerships, hopefully. It makes room for these more serendipitous, um, positive partnerships. So now let's go ahead to Scorpio. What are Scorpios dealing with? Uh, in December. Well, first we have the Gemini full moon. Now, how is this Gemini full moon activating Scorpios? 
it's hitting the eighth house. And I think this is tough. I think this is tough. I think that Scorpio has already been through enough with the eclipses. They're feeling drained. South node is in Scorpio. They're kind of tough. They're kind of jaded. I think Scorpios are pretty jaded right now. They're kind of like, how much more transformation do I have to deal with? Um, and unfortunately, you have Mars in the eighth. That's intense. It's very subversive. It's very gossipy, but it's also very, it's very manipulative. You're probably just caught in situations where you are either manipulating people accidentally or intentionally and, or people are manipulating you. It's also deeply psychological. So you're getting into, um, you know, being more conscious of other people's ticks and habits and subconscious behaviors. Maybe, again, wanting to manipulate people in that way. But when Mars conjuncts the moon there, it just feels like this would be the wrong time to gossip. And maybe this is when gossip catches up to you. So you should just stop gossiping now if you do anything like that. Just do not trade in secrets and in, in secretive information because it could catch up to you here. And this could even just be like an agitated conversation about something related to finance, money, and or even just your own internal demons. Like there's just something here that's very uh, powerful, but not in a good way. It just feels like it's excessive. It's just too much. Um, it's just like something you've repressed, maybe something you've been locking away for a long time. It finally just comes out and you're like, it had to come out. So what I would do here is just, just let these things go now. Like let these things slowly leave you instead of like being pent up. So don't be, don't, don't, don't get pent up here as best as, as much as possible here. Avoid that. Uh, Venus squares Neptune, um, between the second house and the fifth house. Um, so, you know, you still have Jupiter, Jupiter, Venus square there. Um, you know, that could be creative. Jupiter in the fifth is allowing you to maybe express your values creatively, your ideas creatively. Um, but otherwise I don't see it as a huge deal. Um, Saturn's in the fourth, trining Mars in the eighth. Um, yeah, I mean, this that Saturn in the fourth can spell trouble with the family and just feeling isolated and disconnected from them. So maybe you're arguing with a family member about money and about assets. Um, and that somehow maybe creates more of a feeling of separation. Uh, but I want to jump ahead to the Cap New Moon. The Cap New Moon is uh, happening at the date you see here, December 23rd. Um, so for Scorpio Risings, the Cap New Moon is happening in the third. It's happening in the third house primarily. And um, the third house is about communication. Birth of a new communication uh, or uh, an important conversation. Capricorn is usually important. This could be an important conversation, um, you know, an important commitment to a new learning journey, uh, educational journey. Um, and there's a lot of cap here. And with Pluto in the third, you can just learn something more deeply at this time. Or you could have a more in-depth conversation with somebody that's quite empowering and transformative. And this is all squaring Jupiter, which has now entered your sixth house again. The sixth house of coworkers, but also uh, giving you a perspective maybe that you need on your health your exercise routines, your work process. It's not a very flashy Jupiter transit, but from end of December until, um, you know, late May, you're going to have more perspective on these things, on coworkers, on your diet, on your uh, exercise routines, your health, on your work, on your work process again. So Jupiter will give you a new vantage point here. Um, that maybe allows you to get along better with certain coworkers, or maybe allows you to reallocate or re and shift your work routines, your workout routines as well, to make it better for you. Um, and then uh, there's a there's an important yod for you here because the south node node will be in conjunct to Mars in Gemini and Chiron in Aries. So this is a major uh, is an is a major letting go of maybe something from early December. So on that Gemini full moon, you 
had repressed something and you let it out and it bursts. And now you're doubling back and you're willing to let it go. So let go of that grudge, which I know is hard for Scorpios, but I think you can do it. Uh, so now let's go into Sag. So for Sag Risings. What's going to be happening for you at uh, the beginning of December? So we have this Gemini full moon. Sag Risings, Gemini full moon doesn't look too easy for you either because it's activating the angular houses, just like all the mutable signs. Now, the mutable signs, I, you know, I've talked about this before on TikTok, like the mutable signs kind of have an interesting December. I, I said that they were kind of finishing the year strong in a lot of ways, and I still think they are. It's just that like on this new moon or this full moon, there's just this intense conversation. So if you're a Sag or a Gemini, you have the energy, you have Mars like activating you. You have a competitive edge over a lot of signs right now. But on this full moon, it's like, it's just like, it may, may feel like a little bit too much. Like you got more than you bargained for. And here the argument is happening in a partnership with a partner. So the seventh house, it's an open enemy, maybe even. So an, a, a known enemy. Um, you're disagreeing with somebody a lot over something here. So I don't know what it is about because that depends on your chart, but there's probably a bitter disagreement that challenges the sanctity of a partnership, whether that's a business partnership, romantic or a friendship. Uh, so just be mindful of this, of this time. Like don't necessarily um, overplay or get too personal because Mars will make things egoic and personal. Don't make things too personal in an argument here. Um, and uh, at the same time, Venus will be in your first house, which makes you a little bit more agreeable. And it's squaring Jupiter and Neptune in the fourth, which, um, you know, could be um, a positive relationship dynamic with somebody in your home or your family. Um, and then we do finally have Saturn trining, you know, these placements. So Saturn is trining the moon and Mars between the third and seventh. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a, there's like a war of ideas here with a partner, but maybe once you settle that debate, it just helps you organize your thoughts a little bit better going forward. So that's really the net net that, um, then we jump into the cap new moon at the end of the month. And for you, the cap new moon is really happening in your second house. So let me show that. So yeah, the cap new moon, um, again, assuming a whole sign system here, um, but really it's in your second house, all this cap energy of values. So we're embarking on a new journey here of value systems or maybe a new income with the second house being about money. Maybe we're committing to a new income stream. We're getting money in some way. Uh, we're working, we're coming up with a new plan to work towards financial stability. Um. And Mercury, Venus are conjunct Pluto. So it's also about like being really determined to make more money or to gain more of whatever it is you value. And it's squaring Jupiter, uh, you know, at this point, uh, Jupiter is really in your fifth. Um, it should really be in your fifth at this point. Um, so um, it's just not showing up in the in this whole sign system here uh but or in this plasma system here but anyway so jupiter is back in aries at the end of december so sag risings are going to feel this uptick in creative confidence and the confidence to express yourself creatively in front of people jupiter in the fifth is nice so if you're an artist by the end of december you're getting more of a tailwind in your in your creative life and maybe there's a connection between the fifth and the second there where you're able to monetize your creations or you're just feeling kind of pulled in two different directions. You want to create, you also want to monetize. Maybe there's a way to commit to a career that just pays for the funds to do that creative work. And then a yod with the South Node, finally, with Mars and Chiron, you're draining away some type of anger, which hopefully is allowing you to forgive a partner who you were arguing with at the beginning of December. So um, now we're going to move on to Capricorn. 
So what is happening with Capricorn? What's happening with Capricorn in December? Well, we have the Gemini full moon um, in the sixth house. So this looks like a bitter disagreement with a coworker, probably, uh, you know, or about a work-related matter. It feels like work has gotten so hectic for Gemini or for Cap Risings that maybe there is something coming to a head here where you're disagreeing over a process or a project um, or how something should be done. You're disagreeing over the analytical process or approach to something. Maybe you're disagreeing over what good health looks like or what your exercise regimen should be. Or you're just feeling hella motivated to invest in that. I mean, Mars is motivation. So sometimes this is just like, I'm going to do it. Um, and at the same time, you have the Sag energy in the 12th, which is kind of focused on something more spiritual. So maybe there's a clash here between like knowing you have to get things done and be in the trenches and work hard, but also wanting to kind of like withdraw. So you have to reconcile these. And it is squaring uh, Jupiter and Neptune um in the third house of communication so it feels like the mind is a little fogged up here and that's creating some agitation in the workplace so for cap risings you need to make sure that your work process is efficient and you're not you're, you're keeping your eye on the ball so like don't sleep on the work on work related matters the beginning of december it'll catch up to you real fast um saturn is trining um from the second house so you are focused and serious about your financial stability anyway so not necessarily i think you'll i think you'll figure it out basically um so let's jump to the end of december what's happening here we do have a cap new moon so i think this is probably better to dwell on so we have a cap new moon which is the first house. So the first house is the self. So this is the beginning of um, a new you, a new announcement about yourself, a new career trajectory, a new identity in the career with Capricorn. Venus, Mercury, Pluto, all in your first house at this time as well. So you're coming across though as more agreeable, enjoyable. This could be a financial opportunity for you. This could be a work opportunity. And it's squaring Jupiter. It's squaring Jupiter um in your fourth house theoretically jupiter in the fourth um you know this could be a family a, a trip to see a family member who makes you feel more confident in yourself or makes you feel like you're ready to begin anew you know maybe someone in your family gives you the conviction to commit to a certain identity that you'd been shy about. And, and someone in the family saying, no, oh, I believe in you. You should believe in yourself and you should commit to that long-term path. So I think Cap, I think Capricorns have a nice ending to December. You just have all the Cap energy behind you and you're feeling confidence to commit to a path that maybe you've been wavering on for a long time. I don't think I need to say anything more about that. I think I've given you what you wanted. You got what you wanted. You got a lot. I mean, you have no reason to complain at the end of December, honestly. You have you have a lot of energy going your way. Now let's go to Aquarius. Aquarius is um, somewhere over here. And uh, Aquarius, what's going on? You have the Gemini full moon. Gemini full moon's in the fifth house. So maybe Aquarius risings are the one of the only uh, signs that get away with a somewhat easy Gemini full moon here uh, because the fifth house is naturally expressive. So I think for Aquarius, uh, Aquarius risings, this Gemini full moon could actually be a really invigorating creative performance or communication, theatrics, dramatics. There's just something theatrical about this. So this is a great time to perform at the beginning of December. You're building up to a performance that's very passionate. Or you're just creating something new, you know, with your voice, with your communication. You're starting a podcast. You're starting a play. You're starting a book. Um, 
I know full moons are man are culmin culminations of things, but you know, it could still be an illumination that you need to start something new in your creative life. So I, I kind of like this one. Um, it is T squaring uh with a uh, with Neptune and uh Jupiter in the second house. So really looking at the second, eleventh, and fifth. So maybe it's a performance that activates the audience. And it's somehow allowing you to think about monetizing maybe you're monetizing maybe it's financially successful you know you still have jupiter in the second so that's nice jupiter came back into pisces to give you another chance at expanding your money expanding your your financial life and look if you're not creative at all then i still think you should just try to channel this into something expressive everybody has something creative in them it's just been shut out by maybe one of their parents you you just have to like believe in yourself here that you can create and express yourself um, but otherwise, you know, maybe you're just debating about whether or not you want to have kids or something. I don't know. That could be that. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really, yeah, I think that, I think that really, that really works. And you still have Saturn in the, in the first, um, so yeah, that's not the easiest, but by now you're so familiar with this energy. It's like Saturn in the first, I'm solid. I'm set. I can withstand these tests at this point. And whatever you're expressing in the fifth is helping you solidify your identity with Saturn in the first. Um, and then the sun is trying to Chiron between the 11th and the third. Um, that can be, you know, um, a bit of a healing moment. But I think generally here, you might not even need the healing. I just feel like this Mars moon conjunction in the fifth is is nice it's nice and creative so um so make sure you're doing that investing in your creative side so what's going on at the end of december for aquarius is though so the end of december is the cap new moon and at this point though i will say the beginning of december looks a little bit more productive for you than the end because by the end of december you have all the 12th house being activated so if you're the type of Aquarius who loves a little spiritual deep dive into your meditative life or whatever, then this is quite great. But otherwise, it just feels like there's a, you're just feeling like I'm maybe a little lost in my dreams. I'm meandering. I'm not super structured with my life right now. I'm maybe sleeping a lot. Um, but Capricorn, again, is serious, committed. So maybe you're just committing to a certain spiritual journey at this time uh, or a certain type of spiritual, spirituality. And it's uh, squaring Jupiter back in Aries in the third. So now that Jupiter's back in the third house, and again, this is showing Placidus, but just picture whole sign in your head. Um, you know, this is really assuming... Um, Jupiter in the third is assuming the it's embarking, you're embarking on a new learning journey. You're wanting to take in more information about a subject. So <clears throat> maybe you're wanting to learn something more about a spiritual topic at this time. And there's a yod with the south node, Mars and Chiron. So letting go of anger and aggression in some way. <clears throat> And the, and the South is really in your 10th house at this time. So maybe you're letting go of a career. Maybe you're letting go of anger towards a parent. And forgiving them. You know, the 12th house can be very forgiving. And, and at the same time, you're committing to a spiritual journey and learning a lot more about that topic with Jupiter back in your third house for the next six months or so, five months. Um, so let's finish this off. With Pisces. Pisces, you are right here. And the Gemini full moon is December 8th um, at 16 degrees of Gemini. Um, and, um, you know, this is in your fourth house. The fourth house is the home. It's the family. Um, it's your inner foundation. And so this is pretty clearly to me an agitated, a bitter disagreement with someone in your family or in your home or a cohabitant, or maybe a disagreement about what the home should look like or some 
family matter, which, you know, we don't necessarily want during the holidays, but it's just happening here. So there's a dispute going on. And the sun's on the midheaven, basically. The sun's up there, which is also implicating sometimes a parent um, or an authority figure. Maybe you're disagreeing with some a boss about whether or not you can work from home anymore. But I see generally here there's like a disagreement with someone in the home, in the family. Um, you know, maybe you are actually just manifesting some type of communication project, though. And that's something I didn't really fully mention before I kind of dove into this. You know, the Gemini full moon, yes, it's probably most likely just like disagreements, uh, arguments, but it could be the manifestation because full moons are manifestations, a, a manifestation of a Mars Gemini thing, which is a book, a writing project, a communication project. But anyways, um, you're arguing with someone in your family um, and it's creating a little bit of confusion because you have Neptune in the first, Jupiter in the first. But I think Jupiter in the first gives you the confidence to kind of withstand this challenge and say, you know, this is who, this is who I am and I can take on this debate. I, I, you know, it's kind of like, I can handle this. I think you can handle this, but there is a disagreement going on. Um, and Saturn's still in your 12th, by the way. So Saturn in the 12th is hard. I mean, you're still walking away from certain foundations and authority figures. So maybe there's a disagreement here that in a healthy way, because it's a trine, allows you finally, gives you the excuse you need to part ways with that person, to separate. Saturn is separation. So uh, maybe this is the disagreement you kind of wanted to have in a lot of ways. Um, you know, this could be, again, a disagreement over your work-life balance. So maybe you're exhausted at work and you're like, I need more time at home. Or maybe you're at home, like, I want to go back to work. I want to go back to the office and get out of here. Um, you know, Venus is also kind of squaring uh, these... Piscean energies. I mean, Venus in the 10th is pretty good, though. You know, at the same time. I mean, Venus in the 10th, there could be, like, someone who's on your side here at work or in the family. Um, and Neptune's finally direct again, by the way. So you have a, probably a better vision of how you want to incorporate what spirituality you want to identify with, what spiritual system you want to identify with, things like that which I know sounds unrelated to what I was talking about. That's because it is just a side note, uh, but it's important. And then uh, finishing off the year for Pisces, we have a cat new moon in your 11th house of friends, communities, organizations. Um, and so this could be the commitment to the commitment to a new friend group or organization or community or just working really hard for them like a new project within that community like taking ownership of and managing and taking responsibility for something in that area of your life and venus is there mercury is there so this is a social time for you so the end of december is a social time for pisces and it's squaring jupiter and by this time, Jupiter's back in Aries, which is your second house. Your second house of money and finances and self-worth. So for Pisces, I think by the end of the year, you can kind of feel like the corners, you're turning a corner. Like you're feeling more confident that you deserve more opportunities, more money. And I, I would say lean into that. Between December and May of next year, you should have more confidence that you deserve more money. And if you do, if you lean into that enough, maybe people will give you more money. So there's also, again, like I said, a social sort of energy at this time. Like it looks good. I, th I think this looks pretty good for you at the end of December. And then finally, you may be letting go of some aggression and, the, and anger and just parting ways with it because the South Node is yachting Chiron and Mars. Um, and, you know, even that could help you reconcile the bitter disagreement with someone in your family. And, and that maybe is the connection there, feeling like there's a new community and a friend group that you can step into that gives you kind of a refuge from that family challenge. 
or that authority figure that you parted ways with. So um, that concludes my uh, sign by sign breakdown, but I want to finish off with a summary of why, you know, what did we just talk about? So December, I can't, uh, I don't want to oversell it. December is a bit of a holding pattern. It's not going to be as quick paced, as fast paced as other parts of the year. The year, like, you know, things are really going to pick up steam at the end of January. Now that's when Uranus, Mars are both direct. So things are going to get like very, very, very uh, much more high intensity at the end of January. But in terms of December, what can you do? You really have to avoid very personal combative discussions in the early part of December. It just, we're building up to this Gemini, Mars, Moon conjunction just feels very subversive and insidious. So really avoid that. But on the plus side, if you're creative, if you're a writer, this can be the manifestation of, an, of a writing project, of um, a communications uh, project, like a podcast. If you're manifesting a podcast, you're manifesting a book, maybe you're manifesting some type of like written work. I mean, and, and you're manifesting maybe a, a, a big presentation. Um, you're selling something to people. Like it doesn't have to be a bad thing, but I wanted to emphasize that more to help people. Like this is something you want to be cautious about. Um, you know, this idea of not taking things so personally at the beginning of December and then into late December. And sorry, by the way, because Jupiter is still in Pisces for most of December, focusing on a little bit alongside all these things, your spiritual side and internalizing those things and introspecting. But at the end of December, Jupiter's back in Aries. And then we have all this cap energy, which means it's going to be easier to make decisions, to start things, to initiate. So the first three weeks of December, you're kind of waffling and wavering, to be honest. The last week of December, you're feeling more affirmative and ready to move forward. And that's a nice dovetail into 2023, a nice ramp up. But hopefully this breakdown gave you a good clue about what's happening with your rising sign. And by the way, um, uh, I'm hosting an astrology retreat next year. I want your help um, in picking the location. So please uh, fill out the survey, which is also in the link down below. Um, and, uh, you know, once I announce the location, it'd be great to have you on board. It's going to be somewhere overseas, uh, I think, I believe, um, based on the options. It's probably going to be at an international destination. It's going to be me teaching you um, custom, unique insights that only I, literally only I have learned in doing my own, in doing sessions. Um, I'm working on my own uh, astrology content. I have my own methodologies that work in sessions. I'm going to be talking about those at the trip, but also how astrology, you know, sort of these bigger ideas of how astrology fits into spirituality and the chakra system and meditation and breath work and all these things um, and mindfulness. Um, I'm also going to be walking you through, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of workshops here, uh, which are going to be exciting. And it's going to be kind of intermixed with guides, local guides. We're going to be doing like food tours and little adventures. It's going to be a lot of fun. So go check it out. One that well, I'll announce it obviously, but in the interim, take the survey. Also, if you want a reading for me, uh, check out my website. And if you want to know what's happening in 2023, absolutely go download those, those videos on my website. So thank you so much and take care.